Welcome to Queen Anne's County Board of Education. May I have a motion to go into closed session? As permitted by the section 3-305B of the General Provisions Article of the Anna Annotated Code of Maryland, I move that we go into closed session to discuss a personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals, to review hu human resources personnel report, to discuss FY18 budget strategy, to discuss collective bargaining negotiations, to review several administrative items, May 2017-18 Board of Directors nomination, minutes from April 5th and the 19th, to review upcoming meetings and events, to consult with council. All in favor say aye. No, I second. Aye. I second it. Oh, oh, we didn't second it. Oh, okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Going into closed session. Thank you. Welcome to the Board of Education meeting. This is a public meeting that is being videotaped for county citizens to review on QAC TV 7, a local ca cable station. The agenda is available on the information table. During this meeting, we ask that you turn off your cell phones and or pagers and hold personal conversations and comments outside the meeting room. We will now stand and be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by our student board members. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May I have a motion to approve the agenda? All of so moved. Can I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. I have a motion to approve the minutes from April the 5th and April the 19th. So moved. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Any questions or comments? Sorry. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Yeah. Under recognitions? Yes. She got to read the bottom part. He asked the speakers to keep. No, not yet. That's, that's, that's not yet. That's after the recognitions. Mm -hmm. Yep. We're ready yeah. to go for recognitions? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Come on down front. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to this evening's board meeting. Tonight we'd like to express our appreciation and thanks for the efforts of our talented <coughs> staff and our students. A special recognition this evening for our Ben Carson Scholars. The Carson Scholarship Fund is a nonprofit public charity founded by Dr. Ben Carson, who is dedicated to cultivating future leaders <coughs> who are academic, academically talented and socially conscientious. Each year, a select group of high-achieving students in grades 4 through 11 are recognized for demonstrating outstanding academic achievement and humanitarian qualities. These students all have GPAs exceeding 3.75 and will receive a $1,000 scholarship. Students who have renewed their Carson Scholar status are those who continue to maintain high academic standards and are continuously committed to their communities. We have new and renewed scholar, renewing scholars with us this evening. Would our first time winners, Jackson Parker, a seventh grader at Mattapeak Middle School, Isabella Rankin, a fifth grader at Graysonville Elementary School, would you please come forward? We also have a few returning scholars. Connor Allen, would the following individuals please come forward? Uh, Molly Conley, um, Selena Kaufman, Alexandra Kilgore, Colin McCracken, uh, Ruth Murdoch, Grace Parker, Emma Peterson, Skylar Pedraza, Willow Pedraza, 
Caden Schulte, Allison Swierdirk, and Carrie Van Reese. Would you all please come forward? These students have gone above and beyond and continue to do so every year. Thank you for being such de dedicated leaders and role models for your peers here in Queen Anne's County. Please join me in giving them a congratulation for congratulations for being named. County Public Schools Hero Award is sponsored by our friends at Six Flags Theme Park, including two complimentary tickets to Six Flags. The Hero Award is sponsored by our Anti-Bullying Committee and Character Counts. This month's Hero Award will be given to Alexis Craybill from Sudlersville Middle School. Would you please come forward? And would you please come forward with either a parent or guardian? And I see your principal is here as well. <coughs> Come on up front. Congratulations. Ms. Julie uh, Cooper nominated Alexis for this month's award. Alexis is being awarded the Hero Award for being an upstanding student and showing that she is committed to being there for her friends and classmates whenever she sees or hears negative behaviors. She always keeps a positive attitude and protects anyone who is being targeted by other students. She intervenes in situations and is not afraid to talk to adults if necessary. Ms. Cooper says she is concerned when she sees people hurting and always looking and always looks to change that. Alexis is a true leader and the definition of a hero you sure are, uh, to her peers. Thank you, Alexis, for making a positive impact on your peers at Southersville Middle School. And I will tell you, by reading this story, that you are a role model and a leader for not only students to look at, but also for adults to look at. And I thank you for your courage to do the right thing when you see negative behavior in the school system. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Thank you. Congratulations. This is going to be a big group. <laughs> we are very proud to recognize our very own Ken Island High School cheerleaders. Why don't I just have you come up right now? <laughs> Give them a round of applause. so that we can brag about it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Check out this. This is the front. This past winter, they won their third straight state title against more than 40 1A and 2A teams in the entire state of Maryland. They have won three consecutive titles in the winter of 2016, fall of 2016, and the winter of 2017. 
During the state finals competition, the state is scored in stunting pyramids, basket tosses, jumps, tumbling, cheer, and dance. Woo, man, that's a lot. Out of a total possible score of 130, Ken Island scored 120 plus to clinch the state title. We want to recognize these student athletes for all of their hard work on the mat and in the classroom. This group of athletes brings pride not only to Kent Island High School, but the entire Queen Anne's County Public Schools, showing sportsmanship in everything they do and has unbeatable talent that has now been shown for three straight seasons. That's a lot to be proud of. Please, well, as you're up here with us, the 2017 Winter State Championship Buccaneers are seniors. Captain Madison Kelly, Lizzie Hayden, Madison McNeil, Juniors Summer Alexander, Allie Mattingen, Kaylee McMahon, Holly Schultz, Mallory Smelgus, Sophomore Skyler uh, Brazell, uh, Jordan McGovern, Julia Myers, Claudia Schultz, and Anna Wong. Freshman Sarah Groff, uh, Sydney uh, Leonardi, Ashley Martin, Emma Trickley, uh, and would coach um, Laura Della, but I said it right, <laughs> Arboleda, um, Laura Trayer. Trayer, thank you, and Molly Huss. Husted. Wow. Uh, I want to congratulate them and thank them for all of their hard work and certainly your dedication. And this is just another example of all the great things about Queen Anne's County that is great. And I got to tell you ladies of what you've done, not only in the classroom, but, but as a whole entire team, you'll never forget this experience. So coach, I thank you. Uh, and you, you're not going to leave without giving us some kind of cheer. <laughs> Before we get our picture, they, you got to be able to rat, rattle something off. Don't look at me. Give me K. Saying K. Hey, I pump it up, pump it up. Five, six, seven, eight. K. I pump it up, pump it up. H S. Keep it going, keep it going, we're the bucks. Say what, say what, K-I-H-S. Hey, <laughs> Markets in Centerville just had a grand reopening of their store on March 31st. We wanted to take this time to thank Acme who donated $1,000 in Acme gift cards to Queen Anne's County Public Schools in an effort to give back to the community. <coughs> Acme has been a supporter of Queen Anne's County Public Schools for many years. It is with business community partnerships like this that we are able to help students across the county reach their fullest potential and achieve success. Another example of what's great about Queen Anne's County Public Schools and about Queen Anne's County. So we have Ms. Donna, the store manager, with us. And then, can you have to come My sister, Patty. And then we have assistant, Patty. Patty? Mm -hmm. Thank you all for coming. We appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, you have to check. Oh, we have to check. <laughs> Is that in your office, Sid? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. <laughs> 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 Probably be a partner. <laughs> yeah. 
Good job, Mr. Chairman. I'll put that back in my office. <laughs> <laughs> Our next award uh, is the Queen Anne's County Public Schools Energizer Bunny Award. It's given to an employee that just keeps going. This award is sponsored by our longtime friends, Mr. Chip Brittingham and Mr. Wayne Humphreys and Mr. Mark Humphreys at Bayview Financial. This month's Energizer Bunny, nominated by Amanda Enzer, is April April Quigley, our PE teacher from Ch from Church Hill Elementary School. Would Miss Quigley please come forward so we can brag about you? Miss <laughs> Quigley is said to be the heart and soul of Church Hill Elementary School. In addition to being everyone's favorite PE teacher, she holds before school wellness programs in the infamous Jump Rope Club. She facilitates weekly practices for over 100 participating students and has also started a boys and girls running club. The purpose of her club is to improve physical health and mental health for all students involved. She works hard every year to provide wellness activities for students, staff, and the community. She is truly the Energizer Bunny of Churchill Elementary School, and they are beyond lucky to have her. Thank you, Ms. Quigley, for going above and beyond to continuously improve their mental and physical health of, church, of the Churchill community and the school, and thank you for being a leader and another example of what's great about Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Bailey. 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 is our Difference Maker Award. The Difference Maker Award is an award given to a teacher who makes a difference in a student's life. When Brianna Athey was kind enough to submit to us a written letter telling us just how Mrs. Wingate makes a positive difference in her life. Would Mrs. Wingate and Brianna please come forward? Athey. Brianna writes, thanks to Mrs. Wingate, I feel more confident in my language arts class. My vocabulary has increased and my reading comprehension has improved. Besides making me a stronger reader, Mrs. Wingate is patient, easy to understand, a lot of fun, a great listener, and simply an amazing teacher. I feel very lucky to have her as my reading teacher. Mrs. Wingate, not only are you helping your students succeed every day and achieve academically, you are making a positive impact on their life outside of your classroom. Centerville Middle School, Queen Anne's County Public Schools are extremely proud to have you. Thank for all that you do. And again, another example of what's great about Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Thank you. Okay. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Thank you. Our last recognition this evening is an extra special recognition. Tonight's meeting marks the last board meeting for our two student 
board members. <laughs> For the 2016 and the 2017 school year. We are so proud to have had Paige Todd from Queen Anne's County High School, Anam Shah from Ken Island High School serve with us this school year. We could not have had a better representation of both high schools to speak on behalf of students across this county. Your input, your time have always been valued and we enjoy the great sense of school pride you have both brought and your equally competition. Uh, this month of board meeting, we will miss that. Uh, we hope that you've gained as much from this experience as we have gained from working with you. We wish you the best of luck on your future endeavors after high school and beyond and know that you will always make Queen Anne's County proud of the work that you've done of making us better today than we've been tomorrow. Another example of what's great about Queen Anne's County Public Schools. We are going to miss you both. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. This is mine. This is This is where we go into, right? Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Pretty got it. Somebody oh, gave it to me. Let's breathe through it. Somebody has to do the Got two of them. From another family. It's the same thing. How are you? Thank you. Where did it come from? It was on my case. Just now? It's warm in here all day. Hey, Mr. Rankin. It had to have been. I know. Did you? Put it on my desk? Or more? You put these on my desk? It wasn't here when I left. No, yeah, it wasn't. Bye, Miss Isabella. Who did it? Oh my God, that came out beautiful. I know. No, 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 that has a thing. Look at the dark. What is it? <laughs> is it? <laughs> uh, at least she recognizes it. That's a good husband. He's <laughs> a smart man. He is. <laughs> it just came up here. It wasn't here when I got No, yeah, possibly, because there was nothing on my desk. I got two of them. I'm sure this it is. is. <laughs> I know this, this is about prom, the sex offender. I don't know. Just, right. I'll find out. This was just sitting there? And, and let's watch it. Okay. Did you look at it? Can I do that? I just glanced at it. Did you do that? Something's going to Well, I don't know who, but... <clears throat> but nobody came. We need to do that. Special recognition. Citizens. Okay. We have to do the other one. Yeah, then right. Back. Okay, what's next? Citizen participation public comment. We ask all speakers to keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster including their telephone number and address. Comments should be limited to two minutes in length. Comments longer than two minutes should be submitted in writing. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a recent agenda item, an agenda item that is expected to appear, appear in the future, or a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. Please do not discuss items related to negotiations. Those items are to be discussed at the bargaining table. 
Citizen participation is not intended to be a question and answer session. If you have specific questions, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your questions at a later date. The board respects your desire and right to convey your message freely, but ask as courtesy to this board and our citizens that you respect the board's request to refrain from naming citizens and name calling when offering your critique. Uh, the first uh, person on the list is Sharon Robinson. Hello. Hello. Good, Good evening. evening. Is this, is this fine? You can. Let me spin around for you. There you go. I don't really need a chair. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want me here too long. I'm good. <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, I want, I'm giving you a thank you. I want to thank you for correcting the walk of shame. And the board members should know what I mean. The walk of shame. There was no African Americans being recognized as you walk down the hallway in the Board of Ed. Okay, I want to thank you for correcting that because the school does consist of all races. I also want to thank you for addressing the racial tension in our schools. And I want to thank you for looking into why there was no minority task force meeting all school year. And I want to thank you for addressing the dual enrollment conflict at Ken Island High School and last but not least, at this time, I want to thank you for looking into the Ben Carson Award as when there was the last time there was an African-American student that received that award. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next on list is Richard McNeil. Good evening, Richard Good evening. McNeil, and uh, Good evening. I'm here to uh, share some ideas of the, about the Hope School. But before I do that, I want to thank the student board members for their participation. And um, I was principal of the high school when they first initiated that and got somebody on board for that. And I think it's been an excellent program, even from the beginning. But it's been great to see it grow in the interest that, that you all have brought in the last, uh, did last year and this year. So uh, congratulations to you as you uh, do whatever you're going to do next year, you know, I don't know that part. Um, I'm not sure that everybody in the audience knows, but there is a building out in front of Queen Anne's County High School that a lot of people think is a storage building, uh, which it is not. It's, it is called the Hope School, and the reason I'm here this evening is to let you, the board members, know and the audience know that we are going to be having an open house every the first Saturday of each month, beginning this coming Saturday, from 10 to 2 and in an effort to um, raise awareness of the history behind the school. Uh, the, just briefly, it was established in 1892 um, as, one, as colored school number two for the county. And um, it was in operation up until the mid-1930s, to which it was um, shut down just primarily because of lack of students. Uh, there was only six students in the, in, the, in the program at that time. It was moved to the Kennard Building uh, and used as part of the um, industrial arts uh, area. <coughs> and through the work of Dr. Rhodes and uh, Mr. Zakarian, uh, it was moved behind the high school and the carpentry class refitted the outside of the building so it wouldn't it was about ready to fall down you imagine uh, I can't imagine living from 1982 to now you know that's just I'd fall apart probably but anyway um, and then it was moved to the present site in front of uh, the high school so we are uh, we being the retired educators group is taking on the responsibility of continuing to uh, refurbish it as best possible, uh, keep it open. Like I said, we would like to inform the community. We are now listed with the historical sites that'll be opening at the same time throughout the county. Um, so on the first Saturday of the month, May, June, July, August, September, and October, uh, we will have representation there from 10 to 2. Uh, if you've not been in there, and I'm talking to the community, uh, come on out because it is interesting. It is the old-style one-room schoolhouse. 
you have the little desk on the right and they move across as you move across they get a little bigger and bigger and uh, we have textbooks from the 1890s and early 1900s that we have people have donated and we've cleaned up and um, you know we'll have those out uh, for view so uh, just wanted to let everybody know that the that the school will be open on Saturday uh, when all the other schools are going to be closed so come on out and enjoy that and again thank you to the steward board members thank, thank you mr. McNeil Do you have anybody else? No, that's. Is that it? Is that? That's all I have. Yes. Okay. Let me see you later. Yeah. Your agenda paper. This one? I tell you. You don't have one? Next was the student member board report. Yes, it's that year. So next we'll have the our student board member reports. Yep. Their their last board reports. Their last mm -hmm. board reports. So Make it a good sad. one. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Don't arm wrestle. Um. <laughs> yes, Miss Page. Well, I just like to thank you guys after being here for two years. It's been fun. I'm sad I won't be back next year. Oh. That's okay. We'll miss you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this month is pretty much testing month. Um, a lot of testing. We have AP testing all month. We have park testing. We have our senior finals. We have HSA. Any test you can think of, it's thrown into May. So it's, <laughs> it's a little stressful. Um, on tomorrow, uh, we have our band and chorus uh, concert at 7:30 in our auditorium. So come out. May 6th, we have our pancake breakfast on Saturday, and that's for the sophomore class, so they can start raising money to put on their prom. May 8th is our band recognition at Queen Anne's County at 6 for all the band students who have received a superior or excellent at the M at the Maryland District 5 North Solo and Ensemble Festival. That happened in February. May 9th is Jazz Night. That's all I have. I'm not really sure what that is, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> um, May 11th is our Future Farmers of America Banquet at 6 o'clock. May 17th is National Technical Honor Society induction at 3 o'clock. And May 18th is a nursing program pinning ceremony, so we have a lot of stuff going on trying to get it all in. Senior night, senior awards night is May 24th. And then May 26th is our last day of school for seniors. So I'm very excited, 16 days in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Who's counting? <laughs> And then on May 31st, we're going to have our baccalaureate, which is from 6.30 to 7.30, and that'll be in Queen Anne's County's auditorium. June 1st is Queen Anne's graduation at 7 o'clock, and I'll see you all there. June 2nd is Ken Island's graduation. I did that for you. <laughs> um, and <laughs> for our sports, we're getting closer to the end of all of our sports seasons, so Bayside Championships are coming up, so that's mostly happening. Um, all of our senior nights are happening. Lacrosse had theirs Monday, and then Boys Lacrosse had theirs Friday. Baseball and softball, all these Bayside championships will happen within the next week. But we won't know if anyone's getting there until this week. So we'll see, and hopefully I wish them all luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Paige. We're not going on. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Just now. I'd also like to thank all of you guys. You guys are all so sweet and, like, awesome people. So I'm happy that I had the time to work with you guys. Also to Paige, even though we, like, butt heads, it's, like, <laughs> friendly butting head <laughs> <laughs> and I love that I had the chance to work with you because you're a cool gal um, I really hope that you guys enjoy our next um, Board of Ed um, student rep representative her name's Grace Park and she's a sweet sweet girl so she won't be as great as me but she'll be <laughs> <laughs> she's almost there uh, <laughs> sorry <laughs> um, maybe you can have her trained by the time she gets here <laughs> I'll be here every single meeting I'll drive down from Maine every month um, <laughs> on to the report, the actual part. <laughs> so um, on Monday, the, um, on the 1st, we had our Bayside Scholars Dinner, and so the spotlight um, fell on our KI, uh, KI students, Brianna Millet and David Bowen. They will be, um, they were honored for their academic and athletic achievements, their un, um, successful, not unsuccessful, successful high school career. Which is
basically means that they great they kept great GPAs while also being like doing very well at sports, which I wouldn't be able to do. <laughs> um, on Tuesday, May 9th, we have our spring ba uh, band concert. The performance will begin at seven, so please come out and support um, our band department. On May 12th is our International um, Thespian Society inductions. The seniors. That's when I'm, I'll be I'll be there. <laughs> we'll be doing a little dance showcase in order to commemorate our last year as ITS members. I will be in the little um, part for Annie. It, it's it's going to be it's like a combination of all different musicals into one. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we're happy to announce that 20 new members will be inducted into our um, society. On May 16th, we have our dance company showcase, which will begin at seven, and the dancers are so awesome. So I'm sure you'll have a good time. On the 17th the next day we have our spring dance show which was like basically all the dance classes will I'll be putting on a show as well and their show also begins at 7. We are also excited to be presenting some of our students artwork at the superintendent's art gallery. One of our students is Nina Kellenhauser and I saw her painting and it's, it's beautiful I loved it. On May 18th we have our senior lunch with the superintendent as well and I'm excited for that for NHS. Um, on May 19th, we have our yearbook distribution party, which is basically a big party for everyone who bought a yearbook just to have some time to relax and get them signed. It's, it's going to be a good time. On May 22nd, I like want to highlight this like hugely. Um, we are having our PLTW Engineering and Biomedical Innovation Night. So basically, um, all the students that have reached the last class of their PLTW pathway are they're excited to share like their hard work with everyone. And it'll begin at six and it'll last till eight. So I really hope everybody comes out and supports them. On May 25th and 26th, we have our finals for seniors. <laughs> really excited for that. Um, we also have a lot of like AP testing this week, next week. A lot of tests going on. And on the 30th, we're having our senior trip, which I'm so excited for because we're going to Harper's Ferry for whitewater rafting, and over 150 students are going. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's, it's less traditional than like going to a amusement park, so we're really excited for that. Um, on the 31st, we're having our senior awards night, where all the seniors will be, re will be recognized for their achievements through high school. So please attend to support seniors, including me. Um, it begins <laughs> at 6, and then June 2nd, well, June June 1st, for me, for you, Paige, <laughs> is QA's graduation, and then it will be ours on June 2nd, and I'm really excited for that, but I'm also sad, but also excited. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's a lot going on. <laughs> um, Mrs. Thanks, McGowan will be coming forth with her special education staff planning. So this is uh, item 6.01, our special education staffing, as we do <coughs> each year to present to the Board of Education uh, and their approval for the uh, our staffing plan for special education services. So I will turn it over to Mrs. McGowan, our supervisor of special education, that will provide us with a brief... She's probably not going to be the no. uh, facilities uh, Should be up at the presentation. <laughs> She should already have it pulled up. There you go. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I like the opportunity to, um, the purpose for this evening is to really kind of present the staffing plan for special education. Um, it has to be done annually and has to ultimately uh, obtain board approval. Um, Staffing plan is developed consistent with a Code of Maryland regulations and procedures outlined by the Maryland State Department of Education. Its purpose is to that ensure appropriate personnel and resources are available to provide a free appropriate public education to all our students with disabilities in the least restrictive environment. The objectives for tonight is to really provide you with an overview of the special education staffing plan, help you develop an understanding of the staffing. Um, and supports that are needed to provide a free appropriate public education to our students with disabilities in Queen Anne County and ultimately secure an approval vote. Beginning with the staffing plan, the staffing plan essentially doesn't change that much from year to year. Um, on page three and in the appendix A is evidence of public input. We are required to show that 
public has been allowed to provide input into our, our overall budget process and get input into um, staffing as well um, through planning discussion. I also do this through a, re a review of teacher and related service staff caseloads and their schedules, reviewing paraeducator schedules, uh, discussions with administrators and staff, um, and making sure that we're applying our staffing guidelines and that those staffing guidelines are still appropriate. Um, we also gather input from uh, special education parents during our monthly special education citizens advisory meetings. In addition, on page four, we have to demonstrate an evidence of maintenance of effort, showing that federal special education <coughs> funds are not used to reduce the level of expenditures from local funds year to year. So in here you have the four year, uh, three years of what we actually um, was approved and allocated in the budget, and then what our current pro budget projection is for next year. Just to give you an overview of what our special education data looks like for students with disabilities, overall our total count to this year as of October 1 was 883 students. That is down from the blue category in 2013-14 when we were at 995. When you look over historical period, um, there's a trend that over a four or five year period we decline and then we start to increase over another four or five year period. So that trend has existed um, well well, uh, since the 1990s. Currently we have 376 students with learning disabilities which comprises 42.6 percent of our overall total students uh, with disabilities the population. Our other health impaired students uh, is 157 and we're at the highest that we've been um, since that coding has been brought about and we, that comprises 17.6 percent of our total special education population. Within the staffing plan on page five and also in appendix C, you'll be able to see the different staffing patterns and the number of providers that we have um, for special <coughs> education teachers as well as related service providers. This um, has to show that um, we have enough staff to provide services not only for our students with disabilities but also early intervention in regards to our infants and toddlers population. Because we are a birth mandated state, we do provide services for students and families birth through age 21. So you'll see those patterns broken down by infants and toddlers, um, child find, uh, parentally placed students in private and parochial schools is also a requirement under COMAR. Um, and then it breaks it down into our school-based services where we have inclusion supports, our regional programs <coughs> for <coughs> preschool <coughs> and pre-K, um, emotional and academic learning support, and our learning for life um, programs for students with autism and related communication disorders. This is just kind of an overview um, that breaks that down a little bit further. Um, for preschool, we do serve students ages three and four. Uh, for students whose significant delays impact their learning, programs are available at Centerville Elementary and Ken Island Elementary. Our Learning for Life program, our Life Skills program is offered for students in K to 12. We have classes at Ken Island Elementary, Bayside Elementary, Kennard, Mattapique Middle, Centerville Middle, Sudlersville Middle School actually has a homeschool program, um, and both of our high school offer uh, programs for their students as well. We have inclusion support throughout all of our schools. Um, and then lastly, our emotional and academic learning support for students with significant emotional and behavioral needs. We have classes at Mattapique Elementary, Centerville Middle School, and Queen Anne County High School. Special transportation is provided for those students who need that access, those programs, who's, uh, when that school is not their home school. We have to be able to show that we monitor and evaluate the report, our staffing plan. One way we do this is through uh, looking at our ability to provide a continuum of services. So we are able to look at our least restrictive environment data. Um, over our four year uh, trend, you see that we are currently serving 90.17% of our students inside the general education environment. Uh, we still are one of the top two counties in the state in terms of providing services to students in that most inclusive setting. Um, but yet you can see through looking at our inside general education, 
40 to 70 percent as well as less than 40 percent that we are able to utilize our continuum of services for our students. Um, we are at the lowest number um, in the four years that's showing in terms of percentages of students who are in public separate day schools. <coughs> So overall, just some conclusions drawn this year is that we would like to continue to maintain our ability to provide quality inclusive services. A lot of that comes from working collaboratively with school-based administrators and our Department of Resources to ensure vacancies are posted. We hold interviews um, and recommendations to hire are made in a timely manner. Um, and that we continue to increase system capacity to provide our related services in accordance with students' IEPs. Um, this year we need to solicit bids through a request for proposal process um, because we have a vacancy of a 0.4 FTE uh, occupational therapist position in infants and toddlers and we have uh, two full-time vacancies in school psych uh, psychologist positions anticipated for next year. Further conclusions is that um, also moving forward in this requested budget um, that we have requested a 1.0 teacher and 1.0 full-time paraeducator for our K-2 Learning for Life program at Ken Island Elementary. Um, currently the, the class uh, sits at 10 students and they're projected to be at 15 next year. Um, so that is above our recommended ratio of, not, of 9 to 1. So we've looked to add another program so we can keep our student to teacher ratio low. We're going to work collaboratively with the supervisor of math as well as MSDE to increase our math prof proficiency for students with disabilities in grades three, four, and five. Uh, we are part of a grant opportunity with the state looking, looking at that area. We're going to utilize our local flexibility grant funds to purchase a research-based math intervention and then we're going to continue to provide countywide and site-specific support, technical assistance, and consultation. Lastly, I just want to recognize what supports out there are for parents since we do have a lot of community members that do view this. Uh, we have our infants and toddlers program. We have a family support and preschool partners. Uh, Christy Miranda is a parent who provides information to families um, of children and youth ages birth through five. She also helps coordinate community services and workshops. For our school-based uh, students and families, Jennifer Durge is available to answer questions, help attend <coughs> IEP meetings for them to help understand the IEP process and the IEPs themselves. And then lastly, we have our Special Education Citizens Advisory Committee that meets on a monthly basis September through May. Um, the purpose of that is to seek parent input and community input for our special education services as well as another opportunity to provide some training and collaborative uh, opportunities for parents. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me or Mrs. P Mrs. Pauls. Any questions for Mrs. McGowan? And I have one. On, yeah. on your budget, um, you're, on that slide you entitled it Evidence of Maintenance of Effort and I noticed that each year that's gone up. What, what is your budget? I mean, where what aspects do you have in your budget? Because obviously we can't tap into um, your money right. uh, when we're figuring maintenance of effort. So I'm curious where that number, because that went up. So a lot of it goes towards uh, salaries, salaries, wages, benefits for, for staff. Uh, you figure we have 67.5 um, special education teachers. Not all of them actually are funded through the local budget. Several of those positions are also funded through our pass-through special education grant funds. Um, it goes to fund our uh, speech therapists um, and some of our teacher specialists. Um, myself is included from salaries and wages. It also includes materials of instruction um, and equipment um, both at the school level and um, a portion of it I use for bigger purchases such as adapted uh, adapted seating or wheelchairs that are very costly um, and then we also uh, transfer a little piece of transportation and then uh, non-public come out of that budget as well as how much we pay for contracts and the money that we pay to be part of the Midshore Special Education Consortium. So, and, and the other thing is on your personnel, you're asking for two people. Um, that's based on the size of your classes. Correct. A, a, a state standard is this, or? 
or county or it is it is a county it is a county guideline the state has yeah. not mandated um, staffing ratios however the ratio that's uh, recommended at nine to one is pretty standard across uh, the the counties and uh, city in terms of what the ratio is for a self-contained class okay thank you Any questions thank you Diane Great Bar job. Uh, barring none I need the bo actual board <coughs> About that, about um, a motion to accept accept the special education staffing plan as presented. I have a motion. Yeah, no, that's. Good. I make a motion that we accept the um, the special education staffing plan. Second. We have a motion. It's been second. Any questions or any comments? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The eyes have it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Mm -hmm. Next item 6.02 is our FY16 uh, fund balance. That will be a collaborative effort between Mrs. Landgraf and Mr. Pinder as we look to uh, prioritize our projects as we move into the summer. So, Ms. Landgraf, Mr. Pinder, welcome. Thank you. Hmm? What happened? Okay. Um, so basically, we're as we're coming towards the end of the school year, um, I think those of you who have been on the board before, this is generally the time of the year that Mr. Pinder starts thinking about his summer projects that need to be done. Um, luckily this year, we're going to have a nice long summer. He's going to be able to do quite a few. Um, <laughs> so basically, this is just to inform you of where we are with fund balance. Um, and provide you a list of the projects that Mr. Pender's looking at and seek your approval to send a letter to the county commissioners asking to transfer those funds to the construction fund so that he can do those projects. As of the end of 6-30-2016, the end of last school year, we had $1.1 million in fund balance. Um, a majority of that was actually driven from last year. Uh, a little over a million dollars came from fiscal year 16 um, funds that we had not expended at the end of the year. And then there was a, about 126000 from previous years that we had. Um, earlier this year, we sent a letter over to the county commissioners in December requesting a transfer of $104,000 to do some sidewalk repairs, some um, flooring, stadium repairs, AV equipment replacements, some painting, and some blind installation. <coughs> and we were approved for that transfer at that point in time, which leaves us a balance as of today of a million dollars. Um, as we wind down the school year, I've begun to try to do some projections for where we are going to stand at the end of this year. Um, revenues, I'm projecting about $30,000 more in state revenues and that's basically because of the number of non-public placements we have and the formula that's used to calculate how much the state's going to participate in them. On the other income side of things, I'm projecting about $35,000 less in revenue. So essentially we're going to break even. Um, one caveat there is that we have nine students who are currently in what we call kinship care, where they're living in our county. Um, they're, they're resident of another county, but they're living here with a relative. Um, there's a formula that's a state used to determine if we can bill for those students or not, and we won't know that for another couple of weeks. If we can bill for those nine students to the other counties, um, that could be about a $60,000 um, windfall to us. We have not, over the past <coughs> five years, been allowed to bill for them, so I don't want you to, but we do have more of them this year, so I don't want you to think that we, that's, you know, really money coming in, but we'll see what happens. On the expenditure side of things, um, I'm continuing to monitor transportation. There's 
a grand possibility that we will have to transfer additional funds to that. Um, and I think we've talked about that most months. We're having a really difficult time finding drivers. We've hired some school bus attendants, um, people who are not drivers, being the second person on the bus on some of those special education runs. And because of the lack of drivers, we are seeing an increase in overtime. The other thing that's driving that a little bit is that we are required, after our arbitration with the bus contractors, to have contractors do all of our field trips. And that's turned to, out to be a little more expensive. Um, then in operations, I am expecting that we should have a fairly significant savings, which is good because that will cover the transportation expense that we're going to have, um, most of that due to the mild winter that we had this year. Um, we also had a, some savings in mid-level administration, and a big part of that was the number of staff that we had changing. Um, we had one supervisor position that we didn't fill. So there's anticipated there will be some savings there. Overall, I don't think we're going to have but maybe a half a million dollars <coughs> on the high side. Um, so that, that's kind of where I anticipate that we're going to be. That being said, so if we have a million dollars in there now, maybe another half a million dollars and then, um, but of course that won't really be available until after we close out this fiscal year, which will be, Usually it's mid-September before we finally get everything all said and done, get our financial statements. Um, Mr. Pinder has produced a list, and this is about $599,000 worth of projects that he would like to have done. He actually has a list of about $3 million <laughs> worth of projects to do. but And, and just so you know, <laughs> All of these projects basically came from talking to the principals, listening to some teachers, um, the SROs from the Sheriff's Department, um, our DES, custodians, <coughs> maintenance, and it really the list was about $2 million that they had. Now, this list does not include anything that's, that's capital, all right, for, so like the capital projects, um, they include like Graysonville Elementary, Sellersville Elementary, that's totally separate from this. Um, and when we do the fund balance uh, items, we're looking basically at one-time cost um, for the most part that we're going through. And we try to narrow it down to uh, safety, security, um, being ADA compliant, uh, building envelope, and then building comfort. And when I say building comfort, I'm talking about HVAC, heating, air, you know, heating and air conditioning. Um, the larger one up there you'll see is access controls um, for all of our schools. Right now we currently have uh, five different systems um, throughout the schools that when you go up to the school you can set it for a timer. Um, if you have a badge you can get in. Um, and one of the items that we've really identified through doing our drills with the Sheriff's Department and uh, DES is really needing to have more of them available to re-enter the building. Um, that was something that we didn't take into account. The other part of it is some of them that were installed many, many, many years ago are truly not on the correct doors. Um, they're not you know, aligned to where they should be. And this, if some of you remember, when I first introduced the um, security cameras, basically we had a three-phase project. The first phase was getting the servers in, getting um, the exterior cameras, and getting the main cameras at the entrances. The second phase was the interior cameras, and this is the third phase that would put us all under one system. So if we did have a um, scenario that unfolded at a school, we're not fumbling through five different systems. We're not paying um, five different upgrades to go from 1.0 to 8.0. Um, some of the parts that are in there, they, they do not make any uh, more. We are fortunate enough through the aging school funds to take off a portion of that to pay for Sellersville Elementary School and Churchill Elementary School to upgrade those. Um, <coughs> so that's, that's one larger item. The, the rest of them, boiler repairs, basically, just so you know, there's two boilers at every school that doesn't have geothermal. So we're always running one, the other one's a backup. It just comes a point in time where we need to tear them apart, regasket them, make sure they're ready to go for when the season starts because no heat, no students in school. Um, entry matting 
very, very interesting one. Um, we've uh, applying to MABE to get funding. There's a grant there also to help uh, cut down the cost on that. If you walk into, say, Queen Anne's County High School, you won't see any entry matting. Um, in the lobby. I mean, it's a major, major liability issue um, in a lot of our schools. Um, if you do see some, it has the old logos on it, accentuate the positive, I think from 25, 30 years ago, um, or stop smoking ones. <laughs> so it is an area that we've identified um, from MABE inspections, from, um, you know, um, liability issues that we really should address. Um, plus, it is also one thing the custodians really ask for as far as keeping down control of the floors and all. Um, if raining outside, you walk in, there's nothing there, we're liable. Um, major, okay. Um, temp, temp shield blinds, this is another area that came up with, um, we went through and did the ALICE training with the Sheriff's Department for our lockdown procedures. We were able to institute and put some of the lockdown blinds in our classrooms, others, we have to tinker around a little bit, but they have to be fire retardant. Um, every classroom should have one, and we're gonna be instituting uh, in August our new ALICE training that we're gonna follow the protocol for lockdown and emergency drills like that. So basically, you, um, you have the door, you know, you're securing the door, um, you wanna have something that comes down over top of the door so that they can't, the intruder can't see inside um, to buy you a little bit of time. Currently, a lot of the schools have paper um, which the fire marshal really frowns upon. And like I said, we were able to purchase some. This would basically complete every school so we'd be uniformed. Um, and on, yes. thing, on that aspect of things, are they ever gonna replace the doors where they have to, if there is an intruder, they have to go outside to lock the door and then come back into their classroom? We're, yeah, we're looking at that and there's also, um, not to really get into it a whole lot, but there was a lot of, that came out in the Alice training of uh, different scenarios that were going to be really showing the teachers and faculty and students also, age appropriate of course, of really how you can secure your door and how some of the best practices that people thought about many years ago really truly need to be uh, upgraded. But yes, that is one item that we we're currently looking at, um, which is not a, a cheap item. Right. But it is, um, Ban uniforms, um, there was an item on there that, uh, you know, they were concerned about Queen Anne's County high school uniforms. Um, last year, we were able to refinish the gym floor at Ken Island High School. Uh, turned out great, looks beautiful, a lot of compliments about it. We want to do the same thing at Queen Anne's County High School. Um, Johnson Control Server, that basically controls the air conditioning in 11 of our 15 buildings. Um, we're really trying to strive to have everything on one system again so we're not paying you know to upgrade many systems at all um, that's actually a really good price the Starfield lighting contract that is the lighting uh, system at Sellersville Middle School um, which is a very very technical um, component that has thousands and thousands of sen sensors in it that control daylight harvesting of lighting and all that so we really have to stay up par with that Bleacher repairs, those were um, conducted by our inspection uh, group company that we need to uh, repair. And then our uh, ductless heating systems, we have two rooms that do not have air conditioning at uh, Queens and Ken Island High School, and basically <coughs> the ductless uh, air system will provide air conditioning to those two rooms. Any questions? All right. So, some of these, they were overlapped in into our capital request, I thought. Um, I, I know they didn't fund like band uniforms. We had that as, I think, as part of the capital request, right? That that right. one is. Yes. Um, and that didn't. Get I guess funded. the access control. Didn't we have um, a security upgrade? Is that a different? We had some. We've had some in the past. There were several schools, actually many schools, that didn't have it. Right. Um, and then we had some schools that uh, installed it years ago, and they're operating like on a. Uh, 1.0 platform platform and we're like on a 10.0 platform right now um, and when we did that well my predecessors and myself when we did it we only had enough money to do basically the main points going into the building and what we've realized from doing all of our drills that uh, there's a lot of other entrances that are important that we need to have it on or people are going to get stuck in the wrong spot when something happens I understand. I, I, I agree with that. My question was, though, do, don't we have something we were funded by the, that's in our budget request under capital for security upgrades? 
That might have been last year. Yeah, I don't, yeah not <laughs> this year. Ken Island High or... We, um, Security upgrades we had for single point entry at Churchill and Sullivan <coughs> Elementary, what we're doing now, was in there. That was last year's? Then? That was last yes. year. Yes. Okay. Right. Right. Sorry. And we do make requests in our capital budget for some of these things, but this year the only things that got funded in our capital budget was the upgrade of Graysonville Elementary School, and then I think there were five or six projects that the state is participating in that the county went ahead and matched those projects. But any of this general, what I'm going to call mid-size maintenance projects, they did not fund any of those this year. So you're, so. you're looking at a budget of about $300,000 that I have to maintain the buildings throughout the year, which, you know, <laughs> as you can see, it doesn't go really far. I mean. Right. Did some of these come out of that assessment that we did? Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Right. And, and our agreement, um, it's probably been 10 years ago now, with the county commissioners was that when we had money left over in our operating fund balance, that was money that we should look at to move to the capital budget to do some of these mid-range maintenance projects that aren't going to get funded by them. So, so in conclusion, um, we would like to request approval to send a letter to the county commissioners to move $599,000 to the construction fund to complete the list of projects that were on the previous slide. Um, it's anticipated that these projects will be projects that will be worked on, hopefully completed this summer. Thank you. And if you have any questions, either so do I. Sure. I always have to make a motion. Yep, I need a motion for the request. Yep. Uh, yep. I need a motion to. I make a motion to send a letter to the county commissioners to move $599,000 to the construction fund to complete the projects listed on the, um, on the slide. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions or any comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Ms. Thank Landgraf. You. So next we have 6.03, which is an update on our Graysonville uh, construction project, which is part of our capital uh, funding. And Ms. Carla Buffalo. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I want to update you this evening on our progress on the design and the construction for Graysonville Elementary School, the addition. The last time we spoke, if you recall, um, we had talked about funding for facility updates for six projects. And our priority number one was the addition to Graysonville Elementary School. And the other five projects that were discussed during the last presentation, uh, priority number two was the replacement of the fire alarm system at Kent Island High School. We have an upgrade to the energy management system also at Kent Island High School. There's a partial roof replacement for the flat sections of the roof at Sellersville Elementary School an exterior door replacement at Sudlersville Elementary School, and an upgrade to the generator at Bayside Elementary School. If you remember when we talked uh, last fall, there was some uncertainty about the amount of funding that the state was going to allot us for the Graysonville Elementary School addition. So at that point, the county commissioners had been somewhat reluctant to support the project with such a small amount of state participation, so they asked us to explore other options for this project. But I'm happy to report that after numerous discussions, explanations to the state as to why we did not think that other options were viable for Graysonville, the state concurred and they allotted us the full amount of funding that we're eligible for. And in fact, they've allotted us the full funding for all six of the projects that we requested this year. So that's great news and we'll be moving forward with those six projects. We're currently waiting for the county to finalize their budget, but as presented, uh, they're planning to match the funds for all six of those projects too. This evening, I want to focus our discussion on Graysonville Elementary School. We've been moving full steam ahead on this project, knowing that we needed to get it underway as soon as students are out of the building this summer. <coughs> so I want to share with you the latest on what we have for schedule and a few other important details that we're currently discussing in regard to construction for this project. 
So bids for the construction to the Graysonville Elementary School addition are currently out to general contractors. At one point very early on, we had discussed the possibility or the potential of using a construction management at risk approach for the construction of this project. With the uncertainty early on of our funding, um, we didn't want to hire another consultant in the process. So subsequently, our window of having the benefit of having that construction manager involved passed. So at this point, we do believe it's best to do this under a general contract. So on May 16th, Tuesday, May 16th, we are going to be accepting the construction bids for the addition project. At that point, we'll have a pretty good idea of who the low bidder is, and we'll also know what the cost for the alternates on the project will be. On June 2nd, we are tentatively scheduling a groundbreaking ceremony for the addition project. And then on June 7th, we plan to see you again at the next meeting to discuss the construction contract and present those numbers to you for discussion um, and also the recommendations for the alternates that we would like to accept. June 14th, uh, this will have to go back to the state once again. They will have to approve the construction contract as well. Immediately, we would like to give the contractor notice to proceed. That would happen on June 16th with the hope that they would get started the following week. We're anticipating the construction will take approximately a year with substantial completion happening August 2nd, 2018. With that, there are a few elements of phasing <coughs> that are going to happen with the construction project. The first being site work. There is a playground relocation that needs to commence immediately as soon as students are out of the building and as soon as we're able to give notice to the contractor to proceed. We also have an alternate in this project for geothermal heating and cooling for the addition. And if that's accepted, there's a potential that we're going to require additional time to complete some of those well fields. So that is rolled into the site work as well. There's a small kitchen addition that will start, uh, construction will start as soon as possible because the idea is to get that kitchen completed as soon as possible so that we can get it up and running. Uh, it is our only kitchen without a walk-in cooler and freezer within that area, so we'll be providing additional cooling and, and freezer storage for them. And then as part of this project, there's some work to the existing music classrooms that will be expected to happen. We're thinking that will happen early fall, but that's also a critical part of the phasing for this project and for the construction. Here I just wanted to give you a quick reminder of exactly what we're doing. You see the arrow here is the main entrance to the current school. We have the existing kitchen in this area and our addition will be going here. We have the existing playground that is here in green and that is actually the area <coughs> where the new addition will be located. And our portable classrooms, five portable classrooms, they will stay in operation during throughout construction. <coughs> This is a plan for the uh, addition and the relocation of the playground. So this is the main corridor. <coughs> Moving through the building now to the back of the building. These are our existing classrooms for music right now. Kitchen is in this area. This will be where the addition goes. The playground is essentially just moving <coughs> out from the building a little bit further. Um, the part that's important to see here is if we decide that we are going to accept the geothermal heating and cooling alternate, the well field for those <coughs> elements is going to be located right here. You, so you see how close some of that site work will still need to happen in conjunction to uh, the playground relocation. So that brings us to some discussion about the playground. If the geothermal alternate is accepted, there is a possibility that we will not have an operational playground by the start of school. 
we believe that potentially September and October they will still be doing some of the site work there to the rear of the school. So we've been working very closely with Mrs. Camp, the principal at Graysonville Elementary School, to develop some alternatives and to come up with a few plan B's, if you will, so we know if there is a delay, we know where we'll be housing those students for play during the fall months. Option one, we've reached out to shore up Head Start in the old Graysonville School Building um, just to start a dialogue with them about whether or not there would be the potential to share some space with them for a few months since they already have a play area that's fenced and secure. If that's not conducive for them, then we're looking at option two and three. We could put up some temporary security fencing there on the front lawn that would give a safe place and or utilize a portion of the bus loop that we would cordon off during play times during the day just for the nice summer months, fall months to get them outside. Um, there's also the possibility of utilizing a portion of the adjacent Queen Anne's County Park, the Ewing Pond Park. And we've spoken with Parks and Rec about this and they're very open to the idea. This would also be for any type of events that the school normally holds that they may not be able to utilize the backfield for. So a boo run toward uh, the end of October, we could potentially use that. And for the PE teacher, if there are anything, um, any classes that she needs to hold that would require use of a larger field. And of course, as a very last resort, we would look at indoor recess during that time, but we want to avoid that at all costs. Our first and foremost priority throughout this entire project is going to be the safety and security of our students and staff. We also want to make sure that we're minimizing in any way possible any disruption to the learning process. In terms of safety and security, we are going to be requiring as part of the contract that there are background checks completed for all of, contra all of the contractor's personnel and that they're keeping good records of that for everyone who's on site. Most of the work will be happening on the exterior of the building since the addition will be happening in the back. So we don't anticipate that there will be contractors in the building during school hours. In the event that we do have contractors in there after school hours with students in the building, uh, we plan to communicate very clearly with the school so that they can alert any of the after school activities <coughs> that students shouldn't be walking the building unattended. They're always uh, with an adult. Noise, we are going to work to control that and minimize it as much as possible. The contractor will be uh, required to provide advance notice of any type of unusually loud activities. This will be an active construction site, so we can assume that there will be a minimal amount of disruption, but we are going to try to reduce that anywhere we possibly can. I mentioned the existing music classrooms. They will be um, having some renovation done to those in terms of upgrades to HVAC and lighting, and there's a little bit of roof work that will happen as it's tying into the new addition. So there will be a need to relocate those classrooms for a small amount of time <coughs> during the construction process. We expect that that will probably happen in the fall. We've spoken and worked with the principal these two classes really don't have anywhere else to go. They're music classrooms. It's not going to be easy to have them take up a small space in the media center. So what we've discussed is that we believe we'll have to uh, have temporary use of portable classrooms for those music programs. We'll relocate um, <coughs> students throughout the duration of the construction project if we find that it's deemed necessary, if there's too much noise, if there are other disruptions that are happening, and in that case, we would keep them in portables, those two classrooms, um, throughout the duration of the project. But we're going to work very closely with the contractor to try <coughs> and mitigate having to do that. Another level of safety and security, I wanted to show you a sketch of what we're anticipating in terms of use of the space during the construction process. Again, the red arrow that you see at the bottom is the main entrance to the existing school. 
We expect that we'll have a construction trailer probably over to uh, the side of the school where the kitchen currently is. There's a blue dotted line that's somewhat difficult to see, but it kind of follows this area the entire way up. And that designates where we believe security fencing is going to be installed. So there will be no access from the school, any of the staff, any of the students to the <coughs> right of that blue line during the construction process. This will be a secure area that will be used solely by the contractor there's an area that they show for some lay down and storage, which is here. Um, there's an area that they will have to do a stockpile of soils. And the shaded area that you see, we have to provide some parking somewhere for the contractors that will be on site every day. So we're looking at utilizing that space. This area is the existing access lane that goes back to the county water tank. Um, so it is a thoroughfare now so it can be utilized for that construction traffic. There will be very strict limitations on when construction traffic can enter and exit the site. There will be specifics on when they can accept deliveries. So we do not want to have any additional movement coming in or out of the school during, during drop off or pick up. Um, so that's something that we've notified the contractors about and that they have to take into consideration in their bids. Just a few additional updates for you. Uh, we have a fire alarm upgrade project that is a fiscal year 2017 project funded through the state that, and, and that is the year that's coming to a close. This will upgrade the existing fire alarm system in the building. It was put in place in 1995 when the school was built. We had planned to do the work this summer and we put out bids for the project and unfortunately we received no bids. The feedback was that there's just a lot of work happening out there right now which is great for the economy. Um, so we've gotten permission from the state to do this part of the project or do this as part of the addition project so we are rolling this into um, the contract that contractors are working on right now the bid so that's good we believe that there will be um, it'll be advantageous to us because it will be a larger scope of work now for the electricians looking at the existing fire alarm system as well as installing the new in the addition so we will be coming back to you next month and we'll be giving you an update on what the cost of that is as well. Some very good news to tell you is that we received notification from the state that we're going to be receiving a little bit more money for the addition project due to rising construction costs the cost per square foot that the state uses in their standard formula went from $265 to $293. So we had expected to get $1,208,000 from the state toward this project. We're now looking at about $1,344,000, so that's about $136,000 more toward this, so that's great news. So at this point, I'd like to entertain any questions or comments or concerns that you may have. I have a question on um, funding. Yes. Um, for Robin, you know, when we have fund balance, I'm thinking this is done by August of next year. Part of it will be, we'll, we'll probably have to buy desks and stuff like that, right? That, that's something we pull out of a fund balance of, well, gener generally, when we do a construction project, we incorporate all that as part yeah. of the cost of the project. It makes so sense. So we should have budget in the okay. Graysonville addition to buy those desks and chairs. And Even smart boards and stuff. Correct. Like that. That's that all will in be there. included. Okay. Yes. Okay. But until the bids come in, right? We don't really know that. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking about the um, playground area. It yes. would be kind of nice if you could partner with the Head Start program because they do have a 
a wide space. Matter of fact, we was walk, we saw it today, and that would accommodate for recess. And that's what we're <coughs> hoping will happen. Uh, we have sent the request in to uh, shore up, and we're hoping to have a dialogue with them soon. It's a temporary situation, so we would hope that maybe we would be able to work around their needs and they could help to accommodate us as well. And as the principal uh, at Graysonville <coughs> has pointed out, the students that are at Shore Up will eventually become Graysonville students. So, you know, the, the intermingling there may be a good thing. Now, will the playground still be out to the front of the school? Yes. Yes, that won't be, it's not part of the project, so it will remain as is. Mm -hmm. And we anticipate that, uh, you know, I believe the principal would like to get first through fifth onto the larger area, but if we needed to, I think she's comfortable doing uh, pre-K, kindergarten, and first grade on the front playground for their outdoor recess if necessary. I was just kind of iffy about it being in the front where cars come in. Um, but it's fenced in and everything. Yes, yes, that one does have a fencing area around it. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Ms. Pullen? <coughs> thank you, Carla. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> Can I or choose to mm -hmm. continue to move forward or, yep. or take a break. Well, you want to omit the break? You want a break? Okay. Okay, we'll take a break. Do, do you want to go ahead and make a motion for hers or just continue? I don't think we need a motion. Okay. Let's take a All five right. minute we'll break. We'll take a five minute break. We'll be back. Thank you. So we have uh, our next item is uh, 8.01, which is our attorney contract with Carney, Callahan, Bressler, Bennett, and um, Shear, uh, and recommending uh, <coughs> representing them, Mr. Darren Burns, as our legal counsel. Uh, so asking for a motion to be able to accept, accept the attorney contract. I make a motion that we accept the attorney contract. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion. It's been moved, second. Um, all, any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Okay, 8.02 is our HR report. Uh, Mr. Farley. Uh, we discussed the HR report. I wasn't sure whether you wanted me to present on it or you simply want to move to, make, to make a movement to accept the HR report okay. as uh, I make as a presented. I make a motion that we um, accept the HR report as presented in closed session. Do I have a second? A second. I have a motion that's been seconded. Any questions or any comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. 8.03, uh, this is part of our textbook adoption process. This is the second uh, as well as the final uh, time before the board and this is for the adoption of our, uh, in our science curriculum, the fundamentals of physics. And I do believe, uh, Ms. Pauls, that we have received no public comment that that has been for the last month. So we would ask the uh, board for a motion to be able to adopt the textbook, the Science Fundamentals of Physics. Can I have a motion? It, should that not go out for a third read? Or is it has gone out for a third it's read? It says second final time. Textbooks only go for two. Two, yeah, okay, two. okay. And I make a motion that we accept oh, okay. the textbook, <laughs> Science possible. Fundamental of Physics. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, any questions or any comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Okay, so 8.04, uh, our third and uh, final read um, before the board for its approval. Uh, if you remember these two, the Employee Use of Social Media and the American with Disabilities Act, um, which we had added some uh, language as related to, I think, Mr. Pinder and Mr. Farley. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Farley, I don't believe that we have received any public comment on these two policies since the last 
Actually, we did receive some feedback on the social media policy okay. asking that we clarify the procedure about when a photograph is taken uh, at a public event outside of school. That was changed in the procedure, uh, I think, to meet the concern. And then we changed the Americans with Disabilities Act to meet the Department of Education requirements for uh, web accessibility in Section 504. So those were done some time ago. We've had no comments on the changes. I don't see a copy of the procedure that's been changed. Is, am I missing something? The procedure was not there. The The policy was put out there and the right. procedure. Right, so we were discussing the procedure and and you just stated it was changed. So I just wanted to know what the change to the procedure was. Uh, the, and, and again, the change to the procedure was to delete, delete language that made um, employees seek the parental approval when there was a photograph of a student out in the community. Um, so that only at school events would that uh, okay. be required. Thank you. Okay, I have a motion. We have approval. Do you care to bundle those two policies yeah. at one time? Okay. Mm -hmm. So is that final approval for both of them? Yes. Okay. Can I have a motion for the policies of the board? No, for the, um, hand, what was the handbook? Or the media? No, 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 no. Mm -mm. It's a, the media. I make a motion Arise. for the third and final time before the Meeting. board, the policy, is that the employee use yes. of social yes. media and the American Disabilities Act? Correct. So moved. I have a second. Second. Um, have a motion and I have a second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. So next item is uh, 8.05 and this is uh, for uh, discussion with the board or to make a recommendation for a board member to be represented of the board of directors of MABE. So we need a motion, right? Yes, correct. I make a motion that we nominate Sharon Harlow for the 2017-18 May Board of Directors. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. All right, we have a motion and it's been second. Any questions or any comments concerning the motions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. All right, next item is uh, 8.06. This is uh, updates to the board member handbook revisions as discussed in closed session. I motion we update the, the handbook as discussed in closed session and to be visited in the future for other updates. I have a motion. Do I have a second? A second. It. <coughs> I have a motion. It's been seconded. Any questions or any com comments concerning the motion? Yes, I just think we ought to make sure it's clear to the public. It, I'm not sure why it was it really discussed in private session, but it's just a piece of paper on there that talks about the names of who's still on the board, uh, or, or currently on the board, since that's outdated. Early, yeah, and then the, the meat, updates. right, and the meat of it Update will staff. be discussed later we'll, once we take a look at it. Thank you. All righty. Um, any more questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The <coughs> ayes have it. Uh, the next item is uh, 9.01, uh, the policies of uh, field trip and uh, curriculum management and drug and alcohol free. Uh, but I'd like to take those one each individual, um, if, if, if I may. Uh, the field trips, and I know that Ms. Alley is here, uh, if there's any discussion, this will be first time read and this will go um, out for public comment. Wasn't sure if the board had any um, questions initially for our field trip policy that has been revised. Zally's done a wonderful job, so, uh, as you could only imagine, trying to get feedback from all the schools and to put that and to update that in concise. So I appreciate her leadership in doing yeah. that. Uh, this is my first time presenting a policy. <laughs> <laughs> Not my first time before all of you guys, but this is the first time presenting a policy. So I'm assuming that you all, all have had an opportunity to read and review it. It is much the same as the previous policy. There have been a few changes just to clarify some issues. Are there any questions concerning this? 
Now, when it's a quote-unquote reading of a policy, does that mean I literally read it? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It goes out for the first, just, uh, this goes point, out for the first read. Then there we are. I guess my job here is done. Thank you. <laughs> if there's no other questions, you feel free to email. Okay, if not, if Great. not, have a wonderful evening. <laughs> Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Thanks, Julia. Julia. I make a motion that we send the field trip policy out for the first time. First, first read. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions or any comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The part of 9.01 is our curriculum management policy and I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Watkins and Ms. Thomas to come forward. Um, I'd like to both commend them on their leadership. Uh, this is a very important policy for us and I think this is another good example of uh, evidence from the curriculum management audit and actions that relate to the curriculum management audit. Uh, Mr. Watkins and Ms. Thomas both lead their project and process managers of Team 3, our curriculum instructional assessment, and um, this is extra special, and I would like to commend them on their leadership. And I don't know if they're just a 30, 30 second clip about, uh, this is a new policy for us. So many of the policies that we present to you, they're existing policies. This is a brand new policy, and I would like to just have them do a quick presentation, some of the, the collaborative thinking that their team has done uh, to put this policy before you this evening. Sure, so the, the purpose of this policy really was is to ensure that we have a, a design, curriculum design process in place for all contents and for all courses and grade levels in our district to ensure that the, the, the curriculum that we are delivering is high quality, cutting edge, research based, and highly aligned to the standards it's supposed to be aligned to. We, our, our team has spent a, a good bit of time researching policies and curriculum design to ensure that the policy that we're presenting to you tonight really does address all the needs of, of our students and of our district and our community. I think it's important to also mention that it was a result of the audit that we did not have a policy in place and so that's the reason why it has been written to address the... <coughs> The other thing I want to add is this is the collection of work of a whole team of people uh, that these two individuals have led through that process. So uh, I commend, there's a lot of people behind them that have put a lot of thought, principals and teacher specialists and supervisors into this work that has clarified our thinking as a system. Sure has. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Make a motion that we send the curriculum management policy out for the first read. I have yeah. a second. Second. Any questions or any comments concerning the motion? In hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Read the, the uh, last part of point 901 is our drug and alcohol free. Um, the one thing I would, would ask the board is if you could allow us to table this until next month. Uh, Mr. Farley and I recognized that there was a, a few errors uh, that we had just picked up and would just ask that we could help clarify that and bring that back to you um, next month. And then to be able to put it out for first read. Do you need a motion? Uh, just a motion to table that until the June 7th meeting. I make a motion that we um, table the drug and alcohol free policy on, until next month. <coughs> Can I have a second? A second. Any questions or any comments? I have a question. Is it um, referring to the, the um, I'm thinking about the graduation and all that stuff. Is it, is it like a... No, it's 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 more about the uh, a couple things that we've noticed there is in the um, the point oh two alcohol content of employees. Although no employee oh, okay. is allowed to be on um, school property uh, in any stretch of the imagination under okay. the influence. Right. So I think there's some language and in, in clarity that we would like to uh, sharpen to bring back to you since we noticed that. Okay, all right. It's been um, moved and second. Um, all in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say no. The eyes have it. Sure, 9.02. Uh, this is to go out for the first read. Uh, the three items there will be in science, uh, textbook, environmental science, and, uh, and global concern. Um, and then the science dimensions, and then the science and global issues, which is in biology. Um, the motion or the request would be to allow these three texts to go out for, uh, for its first read. Okay, can I have a motion? 
I make a motion that we send out um, for the textbooks environmental science, a global concern, HMH science dimensions, science and global issues, biology. Um, can I have a second? Second. Second. Oh, sorry. Okay. Any questions or any comments? Concerning the motion, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Copies of all the text are right over here on the back, so please yeah. feel free to. He should like to peruse to those. Take some <coughs> nice reading home <laughs> this evening. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, uh, next will be the uh, 10.01, which is going to be the interim superintendent report. Uh, just a couple things. Obviously, it's uh, it's a very busy time of year uh, as we uh, as we move to close in the next five weeks. A uh, couple things to highlight from the month of April. Uh, April 12th was the professional development day for us. I had an opportunity to visit our schools in professional development. Uh, one, I'd like to recognize Ms. Pauls for the organization of our, uh, our um, cultural proficiency training. I had a chance to visit Queen Anne's County High School and watch that actually be delivered uh, with our teachers and our administrators and profound. I've had a lot of teachers that come and say, wow, this is, this is really great training. I'm learning a lot about myself, um, so I'd like to commend her. There I went to uh, Centerville Middle School. I'd like to uh, commend um, Mr. Pinder for organizing with our local law enforcement. All of our um, uh, Lieutenant uh, Embert and Sergeant Hampton have been doing presentations to each of our schools on lockdowns, be able to answer questions, what would happen, and I had a chance to observe them at Centerville Middle School. Uh, we have just an outstanding partnership with our local law enforcement. Uh, <coughs> these men and women do wonderful jobs and uh, they have helped us and helped clarify our thinking, so it was great to be able to observe that professional development. I commend them for doing that. Um, April 7th, as many of you attended that was that's our annual uh, event of our teacher gala our employee recognition which was wonderful and to be able to recognize uh, Marsha McNeil as our uh, as our teacher of the year as you know uh, also I think it was last week they're all running together uh, was a uh, advocating for our current budget our current budget workshops uh, Monday Tuesday and Wednesday last week and we'd just like to further um, advocate uh, for our budget and our budget process uh, of funding uh, our FY18. And last, publicly, I would, I would, I know we've recognized both of you uh, as our student board members, but as part of my report, I personally um, want to recognize you. Uh, you have both been a breath of fresh air, um, <laughs> and uh, in the comments of how much that we've learned from you as you've learned from us, uh, we know that you're not going to forget this experience, and we certainly are not going to forget the experience that we've had with you. Uh, I personally commend you. Um, on your attending uh, college and university that's coming up and uh, what a bright future that both of you have and I think you've been great ambassadors uh, for our school system and models of what leadership student leadership looks like so I commend both of you and it's been great to get to know you both and, and if there's anything that we can do as a Board of Education for you in the future uh, all you got to do is ask. Thank you so much. And with that, 10.02, my colleague, Ms. Pauls. All right. Well, I too would like to congratulate the student board members. It's been a great year. Of course, Paige already belongs to me because she's <laughs> 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 She was. We just following little Paige along. Um, so we congratulate her. And it's been a pleasure to get to know Anad. She has a great sense of humor, and I love the sibling <laughs> rivalry. So best of luck, ladies. We will miss you. Be hard to fill your shoes. Um, so the CNI team have been very, very busy uh, this month. Um, we, Betsy has been out sick, so uh, I'd like to thank Cora for typing all the, the notes, um, and Betsy is recovering very well. But the supervisors have conducted lots of learning walks and formal observations and formal observations. I had the opportunity to um, travel along with Bridget Hoban and Rob Watkins to visit several schools. So commendations for all of the work that they do um, and completing those in a, in a 
great um, time frame. Also, I had the opportunity to attend agricultural awareness at the 4-H Park with Mr. Um, Page, and it was the first year that we had that event. Seventh grade middle school students attended, and it was great. They had stations set up. There was so much to learn, and the community really, really supported this event. They gave us, what's it, $7,000, $17,000 for this event. Um, Jenny yeah. Rhodes and Janelle Eck from the Maryland Extension Office headed the community, and even though it was an overcast and a little rain any day um, it was really wonderful and Geneva took some great pictures so if you have not seen those please take the uh, time to um, take a look at them and the students were really very well behaved and then um, regarding some community events I attended the title one family night um, last week here the um, Sunday supper with our Hispanic families in Sutlersville a student leadership conference where our students were very well um, behaved and then I had the opportunity to um, go to Martin's West last Sunday to the Ben Carson and our one little student Isabella she actually had the opportunity to escort Ben to the stage uh -huh. and, um, <laughs> and then our other student Jake had the opportunity to um, escort Dr. Grasmick up to the stage so Queen Anne's County was really in the limelight at that event <coughs> and, and it really warmed my heart and um, I didn't mind losing a Sunday attending because Steve Harvey was there. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun, but Queen Anne's County really, so really was. wasn't there. <laughs> I uh, love Steve Harvey. This Paul's got a it selfie was, with him. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, he, we were so close to him that I was in awe the whole time. So, oh. um, Did he announce the right name? <laughs> <laughs> he actually received an award, the Generous Heart Award. Oh, Do nice. um, Dr. Carson um, gave him an award for all that he has done. So it was kind of interesting. Oh, that's nice. So, so uh, kudos to the CNI team for all that they have, um, they do and all that they've done, including Diane's presentation tonight and the folks who stayed late for policy reads. I have a question on, uh, on yours. On the, on the, you discussed the Unify platform um, um, that utilizes park released items it's, yeah. it's through Performance Matters, so it's a system that we already had, but we had a training, was it last week, I think, where we had the consultants to come in and show us, yes, park-like items um, that the teachers can use and the supervisors can use to create different types of assessment opportunities for students. Okay. So it's, okay. Just, a part, it's just a part of the service, um, but we had a great professional development. Okay. I guess I didn't remember hearing that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, 10.03 is our expenditure report with Ms. Landgraf. Okay, I think we um, pretty much covered this as we were going through fund balance, but I'll draw your attention to report number one. Um, if you look at that, which is essentially a list of all of the different categories in the budget, and then it on the far right-hand side of that, it gives you the year-to-date slash budget, what percentage of that budget has been spent, and just to kind of re-emphasize what I had said before, um, you can see that if you follow that down to 09 transportation, over 99% of the transportation budget has been spent, um, and this report was run through the end of April. So we still have May and June to go with transportation. So that's where I, I really think that we're going to have some overages. Overall, we have obligated you know 96.89% of our budget. Um, <coughs> at this point in time and that category I anticipate will be over. You can see there's um, a little bit of money left in operations. Only 85 percent of that budget has been spent and that was again due to the unseasonably warm winter that we had this year. So um, if there's any questions I'll be happy to entertain them. Okay. And then we have our second portion of uh, citizen participation, public comment. Any names in it? I don't. Did you, anybody to speak? Okay. Should we ask? I usually ask the audience. Yeah, anybody Is there like anyone in the audience that would like to speak? Okay. So the last item, we have uh, a variety of uh, upcoming events. Uh, May 8th is going to be the first time we've had our District 5 solo and ensemble recognition uh, of our secondary schools at Queen Anne's County High School, which will be from 6 to 7. 
Uh, our work session on May 17th, uh, art gallery that evening on the 17th. Uh, our last uh, board meeting for this fiscal year, June 7th. And then the Eastern Shore Summer Education Conference on June 19th. So uh, end of the year is coming fast. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, <laughs> you have a question? Not on that. I have another point to bring before Let's we see. close. Um, I just wanted to, I know the public has been concerned about um, increased bullying and harassment of students <laughs> of different races and backgrounds. Um, the board president, um, Bishop Taylor, and I have both been approached by parents <coughs> about specific incidents of concern. Um, so to update the public on what's happening, because I get ca calls for, on this from some parents, Bishop Taylor has asked the interim superintendent to uh, provide board, the board an update on what we're doing to remedy these things and a discussion on that for next meeting, as I understand. Um, I do have some things I'm interested in finding out, the numbers of these incidents, um, uh, types of actions that we have taken on because you stated the interim superintendent stated there's been multiple incidents um, and I did a call from a parent today who said she didn't know of any and, and um, but I did hear from the superintendent here that that we've he's seen several of them um, I'm also interested in the maybe a, a plan I, we, the, my, well this parent called me because of that great letter you sent out Mr. Paluski um, let, making the public aware of it. So now they're getting aware of it, even if some that don't know about them, but the ones that did know are, are happy something went out from the county. Um, and also we need a, a county plan. And I mean, th this is just ideas of things we need to do that, that really address this, um, because I think we have a um, systematic problem in Queen Anne's County. And I think it's important that we develop potentially short-range solutions and also long-term solutions um, because I know and based on your letter too, zero tolerance but zero tolerance for any of that in Queen Anne's County but I'm concerned that we're hearing so many of these and I know people willingly go to Bishop Taylor she's she advocates for them and and rightfully so but I think it should be a situation where we all are approached when things are going wrong and we're all willing to take action on them so I support the board president on on these this initiative. So that's kind of what I was hoping would come out in your discussion next month, or maybe you're developing it n now as we speak. But it's just some ideas I sure, throw we'd out be, there. We, we would be uh, <coughs> we would be absolutely honored um, to to engage in this conversation. Um, I was um, I have been very moved. Uh, I have met personally with uh, students impacted, families and impacted, uh, sitting with them. I have felt their anger through them. I have felt their frustration. Um, and we've done work in this area, uh, but we need to do more. And, and that action will be swift, as I mentioned in my letter today. There are immediate actions that we've already taken. Uh, we'd be happy to do a presentation. We'd be happy to provide you with an update on the work that we're doing. Um, we know, as my letter states, that we have a lot to learn going ahead. Uh, and we have a lot of challenges ahead. Uh, but quite simply, um, I will not tolerate uh, any child, um, uh, or any adult for that matter, um, discriminating against any child uh, because of their race, sexual orientation, um, uh, it, it, it concerns me. Uh, and I will tell you that uh, since that letter has gone out, I've received numerous emails from parents. The concerning thing is I've received more so their stories of things that have happened to them. And that can't happen today. Um, I am. I was shocked uh, by some of the things that that were shared with me, um, and have apologized profusely. Uh, we have a lot of work to do, and this is not going to be easy work to do, but it's the right work to do. And uh, any time that it impacts a child um, or an adult, um, it is um, is just simply wrong. And we'll have a zero tolerance uh, for any of that in the school system. Uh, we're working uh, diligently on some new policies to put in place uh, to put some corrective actions uh, as it relates to that. But we would be more than happy uh, to engage uh, in a conversation with you and the public. Um, more of us 
need to be engaged in this conversation and using our networks and, and spheres of influence. Uh, this is a great place to live. It's a great place to work. If you heard my comments at the budget, I use the tagline, great place to live, great place to work, uh, great place to play, and a great place to raise a family. Um, but our biggest strength is our diversity, and that what makes us great. So we'll, we are happy to do that. We're happy to engage in that, Captain Kelly, and we're happy to provide uh, the work that we're doing in that area. Okay, thank you. Alrighty, any more questions, comments? No? Alrighty, <coughs> well, I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a second. Second. Okay. <laughs> any questions or comments? Um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Mm -hmm. The eyes have it. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.